President Zelensky has warned of an impending food crisis unless the blockade of Ukrainian ports is lifted. Jeffrey Sachs is a Columbia University professor and director of the Center for Sustainable Development. I asked him how far-reaching the consequences of this invasion are for global food security. There's definitely a growing food crisis because uh, wheat and other uh, food prices uh, have soared, uh, sometimes to uh, historic high levels. Uh, there has been a dramatic fall of exports, both from Ukraine and Russia. Uh, many reasons, both the, the war itself as well as the sanctions regime uh, that the United States and Europe have put in place. So there's a massive disruption uh, to the global uh, food supply in the short term, also to the flow of fertilizers uh, to grow food in the future. And it hurts the most the poorest countries. And in practical terms, what does that look like? I mean, give us an idea of what this looks like a year down the road. I hope we don't have a year down the road of this sort. We need to get uh, Ukraine and Russia back to the negotiating table. They were actually close to reaching an agreement by reports that were heard at the end of March. Uh, then the negotiations uh, fell apart. Uh, Ukraine uh, walked away from the negotiations, uh, saying it couldn't negotiate with Russia after uh, the atrocities uh, in, in Bucha and uh, other reasons, perhaps. But we should not accept uh, that this just goes on, because the crisis will be very deep. It's not only the food and energy, uh, it is the more general financial dislocations uh, that are occurring around the world, the rising inflation, the stagflation, the response of tightening by the central banks. Uh, we're in for a hard landing unless we stop these uh, shocks. Uh, and the most important shock to stop is the war itself through negotiation. One study has uh, put uh, the cost of uh, halting Russian gas supply at, I think, about 12 percent of Germany's GDP. Do you think European countries will tolerate the pain? Even uh, the U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said uh, it would be unwise, uh, imprudent for Europe uh, suddenly to cut off uh, oil and gas from Russia because it would be a massive economic shock. Uh, again, one can think about this in two ways. One, plan for a long war or push for peace. I'm very much in the second camp because I don't think uh, we want uh, in any way uh, to have this war continue just because of the devastation itself, but also the economic consequences worldwide are extremely serious. We do not have the tools to adjust to them. We will have an economic crisis until and uh, in, in less and until this war is stopped and negotiations are the way to end the war. You're on record saying many times in the past that the only answer to this war in Ukraine is a peace deal. But what does that look like? What is acceptable on both sides? The peace deal was actually close to being reached at the end of March. It is non-expansion of NATO. This is fundamental. Uh, it is uh, Ukraine's neutrality backed by security guarantees, I say, of the United Nations. It is uh, a resolution of the regional issues of the Donbass. And there were Minsk agreements, Minsk I and Minsk II, that provide a framework even till today uh, and other territorial issues uh, like the uh, Crimea. But these are solvable problems. These are not reasons for an ongoing devastating war. And we heard reports at the end of March that both sides were close to an agreement and then it stopped and it needs to get back on track. Economically speaking, can Russia afford the uh, isolation that it's uh, plunging into? We don't really know how much isolation. It, it is not by any means total isolation because most of the world is not on one side or another. Most of the world has uh, economic trade with Russia and wants that to continue. Uh, so the isolation is with the West.
uh, so-called, uh, which means the United States, uh, UK, European Union, Japan, uh, Korea, Singapore. But it is not with China, India, much of uh, the rest of Eurasia, much of Africa, and so forth. And so I don't think that it is a, a comprehensive isolation. When the United States in the past has tried to comprehensively isolate other countries uh, like North Korea or uh, Iran uh, or Venezuela, it, it doesn't really work.